So let's talk about let's talk about our first. What are the characteristics of the DAO? It is very interesting, and again, I am being descriptive for the millionth time. I have uh, always concern about those who cannot think critically about their own bubble or DAO when it's compared to other ones, and so that's why I keep underscoring. I'm being descriptive. That's very interesting. Notice. Bubbles have popped now. The Chinese go to the West. The West go to China. And so to actually be able to see it from the other side and, all, and understand some of the complications and uncomfortable or unpleasant possibilities of it is, I assert, important to your future because it's, this is not academic. Odds are you will be interacting with this world. So moving on. What are the characteristics of the Tao? How does it compare to the biblical God of Genesis? First of all, the Tao... I'm sorry, and how does it relate to yin yang? So the Tao, as we've always sa already said, is uh, simply the way. But remember, we also said, and here you should be using your journals, we also said that Confucius had his own way. And so this is the Taoist way, not the Confucian way. So notice the Confucian way is arguably not broad and going very far left and right because Confucius is like, it is the way of the Western Joe. It is ritual. It is benevolence. It is like the sage kings. It is like one Wu and the Duke, particularly one and the Duke, not Wu because Wu was martial, Wu was, Wu was military, right? It, it's this part. That's Confucius, the ritual propriety, all that sort of thing, right? Um, the, the filial piety, all that. The way of a gentleman the way Confucius defined gentlemen. Well, Tao is, so it's a, I would argue that, and this, this makes Confucianism sound bad, and I'm not trying to make it sound bad because there are depths and beauties to the Confucian way, um, and it's not so restrictive if you understand it. Um, but man, Taoism really seems to be criticizing Confucianism just with that first line. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a little sidebar because I need to give you some background. I, I realized as I'm trying to get back on track, and I am getting back on track, The 100 schools of thought. Have I given you that phrase before? So again, to back up, notice I just talked about Taoism's relation to Confucianism. Taoism is another school of thought. You saw in the film that Confucius was wandering, traveling from lord to lord, looking for somebody who would implement his policies, his Tao, his way. And his way was conservative, but critically conservative. Go back to the traditions, the humane tradition because I'm a humanist. Go back to the humane traditions of the Western Zhou and the Shang's good ones too. But anything that's inhumane, that tradition, no. Don't follow that because it's not tradition for tradition's sake. It is the humane traditions, the vision, the sumptuary code, the ritual propriety, the, the respect, all of these things. That is, that is what Confucius is trying to persuade lords to do, to solve this problem, again, in the context of the Warring States period the 300, 400-year World War II. You've got to get your head around that. Um, it, it, it's impossible to. The scar of the Warring States period still exists in the Chinese mentality today. They fear nothing more than disunity because the last time that happened, it was a three or 400-year World War II. Unity is far more important than your little individual rights. You threaten our unity, we don't care about your individual rights. You are under freaking arrest because the Warring States period scarred us. We learned the lessons of disunity. All right, so Taoism was another way, and they were also, so you got to picture all of these philosophies, philosophers of the different 100 schools, all actually like competing against each other for the Lord's attention. I like to imagine Confucius sitting next to Lao Tzu, both talking to the, the king of Wei, or whatever, Warring States Lord. You with me? The point there, for those of you who, who need it, I think it's clear, is that uh, they are referring to each other. They may not do it specifically or explicitly, but implicitly. They are often hinting at, that was just a stab at Confucianism. And the, and the Confucians are often hinting at, that was just a stab at Taoism or Moism or any of the other number of schools of thought that we won't go into. We're only doing three. All right, so the Warring States period context. There is a market among the lords for philosophers. 
because those lords need philosophers, wise men, to tell them, how can I keep my state from being gobbled up, right? How can my state survive and be the last one standing in this horrible, horrible time of dog-eat-dog? -dog? So the way is broad here. The Taoists are saying, no, it's not the Confucian, like, sort of narrow ritual path, all those traditions. It's broad. It reaches very far left as well as right. Myriad. Myriad is a beautiful word and a key word in Taoism. Write this word down to the 10,000 things. We will see these. Again, this story does not end. So as we go through the successive waves, we will see this word myriad and the 10,000 things over and over. Very poetic. The Chinese are very poetic in their speech. They love to use lovely uh, AP Lang type uh, figures of speech and such. So the 10,000 things, that simply means everything. Everything. All of the cosmos, absolute full reality, everything. So the myriad, th the myriad creatures, the myriad things, the 10,000 things, it's all ways of saying everything, everything that exists. And remind you, or re remember, the only thing that exists is nature. There's no God above it, right? We're in a radically natural worldview here. So, and yes, there are, some believe there are dead spirits, but they're still in the natural world. They're just walking around like shadows. Um, so to compare this with the biblical God is very interesting. Similarities. Everything depends on the Tao. Like everything depends on God in Christianity, right? And Judaism and Islam. But it lays no claim to merit. It claims no authority. Look at the radical difference between the Tao. I have no authority. I claim no merit and the biblical and, and Quranic, the Judeo-Christian Muslim God. I am your father. My first commandment is you won't worship anybody but me, yada, 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 right? We talked about yin and yang. Would you say that the Tao in this is more masculine or feminine? And please support it with some evidence here. Just in that claims no authority, lays claim to no merit, it clothes and feeds the myriad creatures. Jesus talks about how, how God will clothe and feed you. Look at the birds in the field. They don't work, right? Because God clothes them, he says, in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and yet it knows, no, lays no claim to being their master. Forever free of desire, it, it is absolutely indifferent. I am not attached to you at all. I am, you depend on me, and I have absolutely no attachment to you. Forever free of desire, it can be called small, the Tao, the yin yang, possibly. Yet it, it lays no claim to being master, even when everything turns to it, because it, sorry, because it, as it lays no claim to being called master, when everything turns to it, it can be called great. It's because it never attempts to be great that it succeeds in becoming great. More masculine or feminine? Seems clearly feminine, right? because there is no assertion going on here at all. There is no active anything. It is simply more like a mother. You depend on me, you're thirsty, milk. You're cold, warmth. Taoism has been remarked by people far, far, far deeper into it than me to be the most, possibly with some Hindu uh, worldviews, but, but but the, the most, as a philosophy, the most maternal or feminine, feminine, feminine philosophy on the planet. The softness of Taoism, the feminine spirit of Taoism is its wisdom. So it draws far more on the yin side. That's the short word. Okay. I do my utmost to attain, to attain emptiness. Now, I want you to read this. See, this is where it's fun. Show me that you can read. You've got it in front of you. This second one, this is a masterpiece of poetry. I told you to look for patterns. Look for the patterns. Let's read it out loud together very quickly. Look for paradoxes. Look for patterns. It's a gorgeous piece of work. I do my utmost to attain emptiness. I hold firmly to stillness. The myriad creatures all rise together. All rise together, and I watch their return. The teeming, which means swarming, 
right, that teeming creatures all return to their separate roots. Returning to one's roots, that's known as stillness. And that is what is meant by returning to one's destiny. What does the word destiny mean? Huh? Fate, possibly. Let's take the word, the, the letter Y off of destiny, and then think of other words that we know with destin. Thank you, destination. Notice, fate implies this like it's all controlled and you can't change it, right? I don't think it's implying that. But I think it is saying returning to the roots, stillness, that's the destination. That's the end. The myriad creatures all rise together. They team together. They are together. And they all return to their separate roots. And that's stillness. And that's the destination. What do you think this destination is? What do you think it's referring to? How do you interpret this whole thing? I'm going to pull back. I've asked you to think about this, think about patterns, and, and try to get your head around. What are your responses to it? Just, just open. I can't hear you. How many of the rest of you see a yin-yang pattern here? So say more and say louder. Leah, please speak more loudly. I've told you guys a million times. I'm so tired of telling you I can't hear well. And you need to speak loud enough for, for me to hear you. Um, Tegan, I thought your hand was up. It wasn't. Okay. Who else wants to talk about yin-yang patterns that you see loudly and clearly? A million hands just went up when I said, who else sees yin and yang? And so no, suddenly nobody wants to talk about it. Please. Okay, then. As Leah pointed out, I do my utmost. Is that yin or is that yang? Yang. It's active. I am, I am asserting. I'm, uh, in fact, I'm asserting my utmost. Emptiness. Is that yin or yang? Yin. So I am, I am uh, look at the yang aiming for the yin. I do my utmost be empty. I hold firmly yang to stillness. Absolute yin. There's no, no, no energy at all when something is totally still or empty. The creature's all rising together. Is that yang or is that yin? And then they return to stillness. And so what is returning to one's roots? What is the stillness, the destination of returning to your separate roots? What is it? There are a million ways. Maybe this, maybe that. Don't be a boring class. Taka, thank you. He's alluding to not having form yet. If you read the packet, you had fun with that one of Zhuangzi. In the beginning... She had no form. I love Chuangzi. Do you remember that one? And that one's incredibly deep, but uh, mind numbing. Okay, so if we want to read this, and notice it could be read as, as a million things because it is ambiguous and ambivalent, but if we read it as returning to your individual roots, and by the way, notice roots, yang, growing out of roots, life springing in, that's yang, and then returning still to the roots. Yin, do you see? So there's the yang with the yin inside of it, and then returning to the separate roots. But notice what's inside the, yang, the, the yin, the, the death, the stillness, all that sort of stuff. What's inside of it, even when the death has come, there's that life inside of it. There's that white dot inside of it. There's that yin. And so this cycle and all that sort of stuff. Now, what is it saying? <sighs> possibly this, possibly that. But what's the, what's the mood of the piece? If it's talking about death, and here's, the, here's the, the beautiful question, if it really is talking about death of separate creatures 
who team and then return from life to death, I want you to stand up right now because you're falling asleep and get more sleep at night, Tiffany. Um, and just go stand in the back of the room. It's not punishment. It's to keep me from being distracted by seeing your face look like it just did when your eyes were dropping below your chin. Um, what's the mood of this piece? If it's speaking about death, how does death feel? Compared to many, many worldviews that see death as a fearful thing, possibly a terrifying thing, and, and you know, possibly a great thing for some and a horrible thing for others, depending on any number of things, depending on your worldview. This death is neither good nor bad, you say. And you, you defined the tone or mood of death through this negatively. It's not this nor that. I want somebody to define the mood that this leaves you with when thinking about death positively, what effect does it have on you? Embraced by death? It's a highway home instead of a highway to hell. <laughs> okay, uh, you two need to like be a debate team together because you both have a knack for rhetoric. When you were talking about uh, virtue versus sex or something, I don't remember, but it was fun last time listening to you uh, because you spoke figuratively. Um, do you agree with me that it's a calm effect? Yes. There is a calm effect here. And so what a radically natural, radically optimistic, arguably radically rational, because if you think about what we truly know about death, all we know is that the person that was alive is no longer alive. We know the body that that person used to live in no longer has that person. We don't know what happened to the spirit inside of that flesh, now corpse, that used to be alive. But before the age of our modern time where we're not close to death anymore because it has been sanitized and removed from us, we saw what happened to the body and we saw it decompose and we saw it return to earth and become part of earth again like Pangu, right? And we saw things grow from it and rise from it and all sorts of stuff. So uh, my argument for the rational part is we don't know anything else, but what we do know is this. We do rise from the earth and we go back to it. That is our destination. We rise, we have families, we team together, we have you know, friends, we have everything, and then we return to the earth separately. And that's our destination. And rather than freaking about it, here's, here's the magic of Taoism. Calmly accept it because radically natural, optimistic, and rational. Yes, Jay. Uh, Gabe. Uh, yeah, no, I think Yeah, Juanza on death, and, and so now we can can segue on into. I hope you, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed just that taste of the Tao Te Ching, because if you look at each line and the the, you can just see the yin and the yang turning and turning, and and it's an incredible. This is why it's such a famous work of poetry that people just love. Yeah. Well, that's a question that we all have the same text in front of us to discuss. Is it suggesting reincarnation? This is where annotation and close reading and really thinking and all sort of stuff. See, if you read it, I hope that question came up as you were reading. And I hope you, like, wrote reincarnation, question mark. And I hope you underlined the evidence for and maybe even wrote, like, blah, blah, blah. Um,
Okay, you all read Zhuangzi on Master Chariot and Master Arrive on page two. I want to hear what you annotated and marked because you wanted to remark on it today. So what lines jumped out at you from this remarkable introduction to Zhuangzi, Master Chariot, Master Arrive? It's a striking word. If you were good annotators, you wouldn't need to be rereading it right now because your eyes would go straight to what you marked. I'm about to stop the conversation because I don't have time to watch you look at look at your annotations. That's the whole point. Yes, and huh? Speak loudly, please. Yeah. <laughs> Carpe diem is more of a hedonistic thing to me. Carpe diem means seize the moment. Oh, yeah, that's uh, so uh, you know, it's 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 the Latin version of YOLO. Um, for those of you who aren't on Facebook, you only live once. And, uh, no, dude, let's go get drunk. Um, Western style, ah, two bottles, ah, vomit, pass out, drown, um, vomit again. Um, but yeah, so you say, and it's interesting, do you get the sense that Taoism, it's a valid reading, I agree with you. There's no room for sorrow or joy. Does it seem to be a joyless? Does it strike you as a, a joyless? Path? Emily, you're saying? Not necessarily. It's a very neutrality oriented. Like, that's kind of the balance of the yin and the yang. It's never full, you're never empty, you're never happy or sad. Let's think about John to himself as evidence, not as the writer, but himself as evidence. Do you recall Zhuangzi ever like himself, this madman? Do you ever recall him being shown, being joyful or emotional or anything but sort of like middle path? Yeah, uh, Savannah. He hated his wife so much. He was so happy when she died. He was like, woohoo, beat the drum and sing. She's dead. Ding dong, the witch. Hmm? Yeah, and so and so I ask you that because I just I will teach a Chinese philosophy course. I'm so angry at, at the school right now because they changed how next year is supposed to work. And after I proposed my courses, and I didn't propose a Chinese history course because they said that they were going to continue with a certain policy. And based on that, I only proposed, I didn't propose the Chinese history course that I've got a proposal for. I said, I'll do that the year after next. And then they changed it. And I was like, you changed it. Can I propose a Chinese history course next year? And they said, no, it's too late. And I was like, that's really, really not the right way to do this. So in any case, because I, I can only give you the tip of these icebergs, um, don't mistake the Taoist Tao for being joyless because it's incredibly, incredibly playful and, and free and easy. It's, it's, but it's not easy to hurt. It's not easy to hurt, but it's really easy to play in it. Yeah, Isabel. I love that, and I agree. Like, why would he be singing? 
and it's because he's celebrating it, right? And, um, and unlike everybody else who is so irrational in the face of what is obviously natural, obviously natural, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, he just chooses to celebrate it instead. Yeah. Because at first he did cry. At first he was normal, like everybody else. But then he stopped and thought. Do you see, how do you see, do you see the yin and the yang and the Tao Te Ching poem of everything rising and returning? Do you see it in Zhuangzi's wife's death story? What's the, okay, I won't ask because the bell's about to ring. Don't start mentally packing. I should have said that. should not have said that. And then I thought, and I thought, in the beginning, what's that thing that he said about his wife? It's a deep, rich, rich line. Before she had form, where is it? So don't you see, don't you see, just, I, I made the claim, and I'm just sort of trying to point out to you just how comprehensive this image is of the change from yin to yang and how yin within it has yang and yang within it has yin. And uh, how Chuang is playing with that idea, too, about when he starts thinking about his wife's pre-wife and past wife. I guess we will pick up next class with the question, does it imply reincarnation or not? and continue moving on through. I do want you, though, what did we say? Did we say that we were going to have a most interesting things forum for every class? No, 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 but I changed it based on your input. Three, three, three most interesting things is too much. One most interesting thing every, after every class is shorter and better because, right? And so, but my question is one of management. I think there should be a forum after every class. So that's what I'm going to do. At the end of every class, there will be a most interesting things forum. It will be one where you have to write before you can read anybody else's. Okay? Um, I, want to, I want to... Oh. And as will be said in that forum, again, to repeat, Confucius seminar ideas that came out, and uh, today's discussion on Taoism. There will be a few 